Tater got run into a ditch on his motorcycle. All right, I first want to start by saying condolences to Badge. Uh, Badge, his brother passed away. Wee Willie, that's right, good old Wee Willie. That's what we he was he was known as, and referred to. His real name was Mike. Yeah, good old Wee Willie Mike. So uh, I'll leave a link down below to uh, Badge's latest video. Actually, pretty good video uh, about those diesel heaters that everybody just loves to put in their vans and everything. Um, and of course everybody skimps and goes for the, the Chinese version. And, uh, he, he talks all about why you should just go ahead and spend the extra money and get the real one and not that one. But anyway, pretty good video. So I'm going to leave a link to that video down below and, uh, go over and, uh, check out badge and tell him, you know, condolences and all that good stuff that's right badge's brother good old wee willy all right now we're going to talk about something again i i talk about things and uh when i do of course it's me so no one no one cares no one listens but uh i've talked about these things before but rv miles he just talked all about uh how big businesses they're snapping up little mom and pop campgrounds, you know, RV parks and stuff. And, uh, yeah, they're changing them and raising the prices, of course. That a lot of money has been funneled into the campground and RV park industry in recent years, with big developers buying up parks across the country, renovating them, and then jacking up the rates. Some of these parks are incredible. You'll see a few nice ones in a minute. But yeah, so some, yeah, some are incredible, but again, you know, most people out there, you hear it all the time. They're not paying. They want to go boondock. They want to stay in the free BLM land. So they definitely aren't going to be paying 60, 70, 80, upwards to a hundred and more dollars a night to stay in these big fancy RV parks that are crammed together and uh, have no trees or no nature around, but Hey, they got a pool. And a shuffleboard and <laughs> some other things. And a lazy river and a playground for the kids. So, hey, <laughs> you don't need nature, right? You got all the other stuff. You got the concrete playground. But it's just, you know, I talked about this years ago. I, I, I There's a video somewhere, but <laughs> I, I talk about it all the time. I used to talk about that stuff. And it's just one more of the many things that I know nothing about. But people are now seeing and starting to worry about years after my little warning. So, yeah, uh, good old blind views. Yeah, I know I just sit here in my little studio and I know nothing. I'm, I'm ignorant and I'm not out there doing it. So what do I know about RV parks and what's going on? I mean, come on. How would I ever know? It's like everything else, everything, even the legalized weed industry. The little guys, little guys, not the big corporations, the little guys, what did they do? They went and they lobbied and they, they did everything and they got all this stuff rolling and they opened their little stores and their little grow farms and they did all that stuff and they got everything to it. And then when the law said, yes, we can do it, you know, medical here and recreational here and here and here. And once it started going, getting up and rolling and all the work was done, then what happened? The big boys came in and they moved across the street and they put a big old store and they said, Hey, we'll buy yours. No. Well, we'll just run you out of business. We'll lower our prices so low that we'll price you out. So after the little guy does all the work, the big guy comes in and snatches up all of everything and makes the profit off of all the hard work off the backs of the little guy. And that's exactly what's happening in the RV park industry. I keep on telling you, the more popular it gets, the more things are going to change. People are going to find a way to make money, whether it be regulations and little licensing and all this other stuff, or just again, buying up all these little mom and pop shops and then putting more in, but cramming them together and jacking up the price. So, Hey, don't listen to me though. 
just go out there and see for yourself. But anyway, half of you will lie anyway. I can go to all 98 states. I've been doing this for 243 years. I have 478,000 miles on my RV, and I can go anywhere I want to, and it only costs me $3 a night. I know everything. And no, you don't tell me they have these 10 year thing. I My RV is 47 years old, and yeah, I know. I heard all the stories, but if you actually be real about it and tell the truth, you know, I'm right. Whether I'm out there doing it or sitting here in my little studio, but here, let's talk about what you're all here for. And that is Tater. Tater got to run off the road. He got to run off the road into a ditch on him motorcycle. That's right. Black Betty. Whoa, Black Betty in a ditch. Yeah. Um, he says some old 90 something and didn't see him any. Oh, it was a, you know, a bad experience. He almost bit the big one. He almost took the big dirt nap. It was horrible. You should have seen it. Yeah, but I, I doubt that. I doubt that. It's, it's probably like, uh, before when he, uh, was in his RV and filming everything, driving down the road, you know, I was just a driving and that guy was coming in and came over into his lane head on and there was no near death experience. There was no, but he, pulled off the side of the road and kind of in the dirt a little bit. But of course we know that uh, Tater has that drama school training. So he played it up real good for the camera and he huffed and he puffed and he, <laughs> he got all worried and scared and made it seem 10 times worse than it really was. You know, I'm not saying it wasn't a close call. He did have a close call there in the RV, but he, again, he merely pulled off and it wasn't, it wasn't all as bad as, uh, he made it out to be, but the, the real thing is, is it's, it's all part of riding, you know, uh, it sucks to be run off the road. It sucks to be ignored, but it happens all the time. Unfortunately, people don't care about motorcyclists. That's why a lot of the guys, they ride in big groups because they can be seen and people actually give two shits, but you know, he can consider himself lucky that this is the first time that that shit happened to him because you know, it happens to and it, talk to anybody. Who, who rides a bike and rides regularly, how many close calls they had, how many times they were run off the road, how many times people just turned in front of them, how many times people ignored them totally and just did whatever the fuck they wanted to do, you know, go ahead, ask a biker. They'll tell you. And if people don't care about you enough and don't care enough about anything themselves even to run you off the road in a damn RV, what in the hell? makes you think that they're going to care more <laughs> because you're on a motorcycle. Sorry to say, but Hey, close calls happen. It's just all a part of riding, unfortunately, but Hey, you don't have to agree with me. That's never the point here. The point is, what was that thing you say? That's the way I see it. That's it. That's the way he sees it. Not me. I can't say that, but he can say that. <laughs> what we do here is go back, 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 back.